I got 5.30, and um, so I'm going to start the um, and call to order the public hearing um, to talk about ARPA funding. Uh, it's the it's 5.30 on Thursday, May 5th, and, um, and the purpose of this um, meeting is just to try to gather community input about ARPA funding. Um, we have, the town has received approximately $855,000 in ARPA funding, and um, with the projects that we have currently in various stages of planning and execution, we, we could spend that many times over, but, um, so we're, we're probably going to, my, my guess is we're going to end up divvying it up a bit, and it's not probably going to fund very many projects to completion. Um, so ARPA is, um, is an acronym for the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 and included the corona, um, established the coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery fund and, um, and municipalities across the state got, most municipalities got funding through ARPA. The final rule didn't come out until, um, oh, pretty, pretty recently, like a month ago or something. And the, the, it, the rules come from the U.S. Department of Treasury. Um, but that final rule basically said that, that we municipalities could spend the um, ARPA funding on municipal services. So whereas before the final rule, there were only like these four categories and we didn't really fit into many of them except one, the final rule says we can use it for government services, which is very broad. And so basically we can spend it on nearly anything that the town would spend money on. So it gives us a lot of flexibility. Um, so there, uh, do you want to scroll down? Um, yeah, so our existing projects that we, the projects that the town has had ongoing for a while, we have a sewer plant um, project to um, upgrade the sewer plant, including replacing liners, replace the lagoon liners, a lot of the um, mechanical systems and the controls for the mechanical systems. Um, we are in need of a, the town's in need of a new highway garage. Our highway garage is inadequate for a bunch of reasons that we could get into if people want to. Um, the Jew Divine Library expansion has been uh, trying to get going now for a couple of years. We have the Yellow Barn Business Accelerator down where the Greensboro Garage used to be. We really want to replace the Swinging Bridge and get that open um, since it's failed more than a year ago. I can't remember now. It's quite a while. August, yeah. August will be two years. <laughs> August will be two years, so it's been a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, we could put money toward community broadband, expanding fiber internet. Um, we could do, 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 what Sorry, else? Sorry, it's down accidentally. Uh, <coughs> we also have, um, this, the memorial building could use some, some work, especially the roof needs a tune-up. Um, the townhouse needs some love, and uh, there are other things. So some other things that came up uh, our last meeting, well, the library um, doing more other projects for the memorial building, including heating and uh, possibly solar. Um, there's sidewalks, roads, water lines. Um, there's uh, plenty of things to spend money on. We could, we could, <laughs> we could spend this money so many times. Anyway, so I hope that people are here to offer offer their opinions, their input. And with that, I'd love to open it up. And if you just would raise your hand, and then I'll call on you and state your name. And yeah. I'm Mike Lance. I'm with Denise Hardwick. Um, Cheryl Michaels had put out a survey, a couple of surveys, several surveys um, about 
what were the safety needs in East Hardwick. <coughs> and I just want to come and report on those and say that those are things that we'd like to see some spending on. Um, if we had the whole 350 billion for Hardwick, we could probably handle it. <laughs> yeah, we could do a lot of things with that. <laughs> uh, but uh, the speeding is the most frequently addressed safety issue in East Hardwick um, through several surveys. Um, there's a lot of information on the internet that you can find that radar speed signs do reduce speeding. Uh, there have been uh, they put out non-sign radar devices to measure speeding and then put the signs up and they say a distinct difference that's uh, uh, one that I saw was about eight miles per hour average to reduce the speed. So we're, we're requesting, uh, we'd like to see two radar speed signs. We've got five different locations, uh, well, probably more than five locations if you take two directions, but we've got five streets entering East Hardwick. Uh, uh, several of them coming right off of uh, Route 16, another one coming in from Greensboro where the speed limit is 50 and it drops down to 25. So, uh, plus on School Street, coming right off the 16. So, uh, if we could have two speed signs that could be moved about to, to uh, get people's attention, to get them to reduce uh, their speeding, we'd, we'd really appreciate that. Uh, sidewalks are the second most frequently mentioned issue. Um, and that's been for a lot longer than there's been in East Hardwood neighborhood organization. People have been complaining about the sidewalks in East Hardwick. Uh, uh, they were really nice concrete sidewalks and they were covered with asphalt. Uh, most of them. Uh, some of them are still concrete. Um, and the asphalt covering is random um, and erratic. Uh, and one of the things that has happened is we have a reverse curve on the sidewalks, streets higher than the sidewalks. So water coming down the hill flows off onto the sidewalks and actually washes into to a number of neighbors' uh, front yards and causes flooding in their, in their houses. So. Uh, so the drainage is poor, um, existing sidewalks need, need uh, work, and uh, there aren't many sidewalks. There's basically one sidewalk on Main Street and then a short one on Brick, Brick House Road, uh, which is about a quarter of a mile of sidewalks. And comparing that to Hardwick, which has far over two and a half miles, if you count sidewalks on both sides of the street, I measured it out. And it was sidewalk. I just did the distance, not multiplying it by two, where there's sidewalks in either side. So uh, ten times as many much sidewalk in hard in the town of Hardwick is you know, a big difference. Um, we also have safety issues with guardrails. School Street and uh, Cedar Street have fairly large. Oh, thank you. Uh, fairly large drops. You can see here on Cedar Street, that's uh, maybe a foot, foot and a half before it starts plummeting off a 30-foot drop. Uh, the plummet up on, on School Street's even deep more. It goes down 50 feet. Uh, if somebody runs off the road, one of the best things they can hope for is they run into a tree so they don't go all the way down into the river. Um, so those are, those are the three safety issues that we've got. We also have, and I noticed there was a mention of wastewater, we have a, a waters issue that is, we have a very old infrastructure. It's 120 years old. Uh, we, I don't know if you're aware of it, this, the uh, fire hydrants can't be turned on well, they, they're turned on, but they all have signs on them. Say they're on operation because we don't meet the minimum standard for 
the size of water mains going to a fire hydrant. Um, there's concern, you know, they can, they can fight fire, a fire, if they had to fight two fires. I've got a hammer out in my car. Sorry, Mike. Want everybody to hear. Yeah. Um, so, with global warming, and if you look at areas that are heavily forested, like the Hardwick area is, that are in drought conditions, and all the fires I have, it's not uncommon to have multiple fires going. And we'd have we'd have a serious issue with. Uh, with what we've got. So what we're asking for is just, um, it's been 20 years since there's been an engineering study on our 120 year old uh, infrastructure. It's been since that study was done that the state rules came out about the size of water mains servicing fire hydrants. Um, and that wasn't even covered in that, in that study. So we feel that there's a, a need for another engineering study uh, on our old, old, old water system. Can I add something to that? Can you state your name first? Cheryl Michaels. Do I have to raise my hand? <laughs> That's what you said. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Mike has said that it's a 20, 120 year old system. Um, it needs to be upgraded to eight inch pipes. Right now there are eight inch pipes coming out of the um, springs. They go to six and then they go to four. Um, there are no lead pipes, but we do have lead um, joints, which are generally understood to not be a problem. Um, the biggest concern is multiple small leaks. Um, you know, we never know about a leak until there's a big leak and it's flooding somebody's backyard or something. So, but we do know that the leak studies show that there are multiple small leaks in the system. So we are constantly losing water. Um, um, the other thing is that the system really couldn't handle because of the small pipes, possibly, even though we're putting out enough water flow, um, any kind of expansion, say suppose there was going to be growth on Route 16 or something that wanted to hook into the East Harbor water supply. There's no room there for expansion. Um, at our last meeting, um, Randy Thompson emphasized, and, and so did Doug Casavant, that we're kind of stuck without an engineering study. Engineering studies are expensive. They've looked at them several times and not felt that they could pay for one. Um, there are funds available. Dave Gross just did a research on, you know, a lot of funds that are available to help with water system upgrades, but that's not going to happen unless we have the engineering study, and we're kind of stuck with that. Um, I'd like to add, you may not know the name Randy Thompson, but he runs uh, Ben & Jerry's water system, so he's got a pretty good background. He also used to uh, run the Waterbury water system as well. So he's he's on the he's on our advisory committee to the water to the East Arbor Fire District. Um, and the next point I wanted to make is that there's always this question about does the East Harbor Fire District part of Hardwick? And I guess my comment about that would be, if we're a separate municipality, we should get our own ARPA funds, and we're not. So we have to come to you. I believe it's a quasi municipal organization. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So that's why that's on the list. I know there was a question about it. So that's the stuff we'd like to have added to the, to the list. To your ever growing list. <laughs> yeah, excellent. It's Thank the you. East Hardwick wish list. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and I didn't point out in that picture, you, the Main Street sidewalk, you can see how the uh, street is quite a bit higher than the sidewalk there. Yeah. All right. Uh, other people have? Norma, uh, could you state your name, please? Uh, Norma Wiesen. I'm going to stand up so I can see you. Um, I'm here representing the Conservation Commission, and I think you have a document from us um, about our request, and that is a request 
for funding for a natural resources inventory. And the title is pretty self-explanatory. Think about that for a minute. Uh, a natural resources inventory has not been done in the town. And the world is changing. The climate is changing. Development may be coming. Things are always in flux. And we don't have a base document that describes what natural resources we have in the town, where are they, what should we be doing to be able to pass on to the next generation a healthy environment, an environment that we haven't maybe simply by not having good information caused damage to. Um, the town already knows that this is a good idea. Um, if you look on the second page of this document, you'll see that I have quoted the town plan. Um, the municipal plan, which says, and I put it in red so you couldn't miss it, a natural resources inventory should be conducted throughout Hardwick. So there is a recognition that we don't have this basic document kind of a foundation document about the resources of the town, where they are, what they are, and so forth. I don't know that I need to go more unless you have questions. I think that's, that's good. Yeah, that's good. You, um, you oh. say that there, that there is a process here, and how long has this committee been in, in place, Norma? Four or five years? The commission? No. The commission? The commission was formed two years ago. Two yeah. years ago at, okay. at town meeting. Um, I just wondered if the commission has started this process at all. We've held public meetings to try to discuss with, with folks what a natural resources inventory is, why it's a valuable document, and to begin to build knowledge and interest in the town that this is something uh, that would be mutually beneficial to us all. Oh, quick question. Are there any towns in the area, in the north, in the kingdom, that have, have one of these that we could see and... and um, sure, I can get one. Yeah. Um, and be glad to do that. Um, it's my understanding that about 60% of the towns statewide have have this document. Cool. Um, and others are moving in, in, in that order. direction. Yeah. Especially as all of us are much more aware of our environment, our natural environment, than we were mm -hmm. several years ago. Um, the, the evidence is everywhere that things are changing. And I don't, I don't have I don't want to bore you, but I'm happy to <laughs> no, try good. to answer questions. That's great. Okay. Thank you, Norma. Um, I think Crossbury did one, and I think either Marshfield or Plainfield did one, but there may be others that are closer. Okay. Uh, others? Other folks? Yeah. Hey, so Andy Houston. Um, I work here in town, and I'm here with my hat on as a board member for NEC Arts, Northeast Kingdom Arts Council, which is the entity that's responsible for the Hardwick Townhouse and kind of stewarding and working on sort of basically at this point bringing that space back to life given that the pandemic has shut down any desire and ability to really gather and be together as one. Um, I joined the board a couple of years ago with the intent of trying to see through this project of uh, addressing the fire escapes on the side of the building. If anybody has been by the Hardwick Townhouse recently, there's extensive water damage uh, on the sides. The fire escapes are out of code. We, uh, prior to my joining, the board had seen a number of different options available for ways to address this and the solution to also create a fully accessible building as the stage currently is not accessible is to create an enclosed uh, egress and remove those side stairs that are on the side of the building and kind of just button things up that way. 
Um, this project came in with an initial bid in early 2020 of $152,000. We have been diligently working to apply for other grants and identify building needs and our most recent bid for this specific project came back at over $200,000, um, 230000 to be exact, and that was from <coughs> Kingdom Construction. So the inflation, as we've seen with the Yellow Barn project, as we've seen with Judavine, um, is, is becoming something that's a little bit bigger than this all-volunteer board of nine people can really chew, in addition to the other, uh, the other needs of the facility. And that's what's outlined sort of on this document. If you look at the bottom section, we did have a preservation trust came through and did a needs assessment so that we could really get an understanding of what our strategy would be for the facility itself going forward. Um, so in addition to this sort of fire escape and stage accessibility project, we know that painting needs to be done. I don't have a price for that. Um, we know that there's some grading and drainage work to be done around the foundation so that there isn't uh, water that's pooling and, and creating uh, raw issues. We know that there's a tower girt and brace that need to be replaced inside. We need the roof replacement. There's interior <coughs> water damage. So all of this to say, number one, I'm very heartened to see that the townhouse is on the list in general, and as a broader member of the community, very much support that. Um, but also just to sort of outline the various demands that we know are coming up just for the facility itself, um, and where we have been trying to, and this is sort of the top portion of that sheet, where we have been trying to uh, shore up some funding. So we have had, uh, support from the Preservation Trust of Vermont through the Freeman Foundation. We've been working on various uh, grants through the state. Some of them have changed their guidelines, so we're no longer fully eligible based on the project we're doing. That's what's happened with the Vermont Arts Council. Mm -hmm. So this is a slow moving ship. Um, and the reason why this work is important is that it is a community gathering space and coming back online after a time of people not really being able to gather. We are thrilled that the Craftsbury Chamber Players will be returning to the townhouse this summer. Last year, the Mirror Theater was there for production. We have started to think about what we'll be able to program for free events, um, one of which is going to be a Black Fly Story Hour towards the end of the summer slash early fall, if anybody listens to The Moth, but The Moth doesn't let you use their branding if you aren't officially their thing. So, Basically, what are the free things we can do to kind of bring people in and get that space activated and bring folks together um, that then help sort of promote this sense of community and continue to elevate what it is that people enjoy about being in or near the town of Hardwick. So all that said, um, I don't envy the position that you guys have to figure out how you're going to spend these funds. Um, but I very much appreciate your time and I appreciate any support that can go towards the townhouse. Um, it's, a, it's a big, big lift and we're doing everything that we can. We're falling short. Thank you. Um, I'll just comment that it doesn't seem that your increase in cost um, isn't as bad as some of our other projects. So. Well, no. it could be worse. <laughs> it was more than 10 days ago, so. Oh, knows? okay, well, right. Yeah. You know, this was, uh, yeah. And, and I will note that, the, you know, for our annual appeals and fundraising that we've done, the community has been incredibly generous and supportive, especially in a way that I, I, I was a little bit, um, if it, it took me a little bit by surprise, because I, was, I wasn't thinking that people were going to continue to want to give towards this when we've just been roadblocked time and time again. And one of, the, one of the things that we've done to shift the scope of the project is we are going to move forward with the engineering phase and we're working on moving forward with just the demo of the stairs and to close the fire escape, or not, well, close the fire escape because the stairs won't be there for sure. But we're gonna close the balcony for future productions this summer just so that we can get folks in on the ground floor, have things going on, but prevent the further water damage that's happening on the siding, so. Great, thank you. Uh, other folks? Got five whole minutes. I know. I'm Nancy Fellow, and um, I was interested in learning what the process for deciding where this money would go, other than these two expanded, expanded hearings, or mm -hmm. this isn't a hearing, or is it? I don't know. Whatever, it, you know, conversations. Yeah. And um, 
I'm, I'm thinking that, like Elizabeth Warren said, you know, we don't want a bigger piece of the pie. We want a different pie. You know, it's, it's the, the issue of community engagement or in, in, and inclusiveness is, um, it bothers me, you know, it, it just seems to expand the, the gulf of the engaged and not engaged. And, you know, the, uh, so I'm thinking in terms of the, the carbon footprint of individuals and of making people, or not making, but engaging people's awareness of how we're all um, implicated. You know, and there's, if transportation is the second only to heating uh, energy consumption that's pushing the, the climate disaster, then why are we not promoting degrowth, you know, and doing more with less, you know? Um, and, you know, the, um, I mean, things like um, um, a wood wood dump. This is biomass, you know. This is something that that could be. I mean, I know uh, Danville has a, a wood dump. I mean, it, it could be a chipper uh, shared with different places, but there should be a place where people who do their pruning and you know, instead of burning it into the atmosphere, you know, we should we should have a place that it can be stored on Creamery Road or something. Um, and also, it bothers me that Casella is hauling food scraps all the way to Maine to, and we have, we should have a digester here for capturing that methane and eliminating the, the carbon miles of hauling, you know, all of this machinery and, and trucks to, um, you know, across the, across the country. So um, I know Casella got, I don't know what the state of the, uh, the lawsuit is for polluting the lake, but um, I know they were granted another 50 acres. And since this location is 60 miles from, as the crow flies, I'm wondering how long is it going to be before the, the uh, Coventry landfill expands to our backyard, you know? I mean, it's just, there should be more enforcement of um, trash separation and management, you know, for people who just, you know, hire the service and then and, and don't even separate, you know, recycling from trash or from food scraps, you know. Um, so Nancy, I'm gonna reel okay. us back in for a minute. Thank you for sharing your, your thoughts. I'll um, say to your first point that um, the process um, for determining how to spend the Harbor Funds uh, is that the select board is soliciting public input. These two sessions are the main um, tool that we're using to solicit that, but we're happy to hear from people anytime. I've had some emails, I've had people just talk to me and uh, right. give me their, so we're all receptive to hearing those things. Is there and going to be any report in the Gazette or? I don't um, know. I can't speak to what the Gazette will print. Um, well, that's our local. local we're paper. not the press, so. We so, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, so ultimately the select board is charged with deciding how to distribute the funds, but, um, but we are, we are um, taking input and glad, really glad to hear from everybody. Um, and if anybody had, anybody had something quick they want to add, uh, I want to move on to our select board meeting, which is immediately following, but if there's something quick. Thank you. Yeah. Make sure
Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you for thanks to everybody for coming. Really appreciate you coming to share your mm -hmm. yeah, was welcome. You guys can stay for this. Yeah, oh yeah. De right? <laughs> definitely not kicking anyone out. The select board meeting is also These are fun. Yeah. <laughs> public. Mm -hmm. All right. So I've got another board meeting, so So we're adjourning Good night. Good adjourning Good the uh, public hearing. Good. All right. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Danny, you're there. I mean, the trash. The trash. Hey, Danny, I think they're. Right. Well, we're going to talk about ATVs. Oh, I can't. I was not with you, though. Yeah, we just have to do that. That would be amazing. Ah. Oh, good times. Yeah. God. It's just, 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 Scott. Yeah, we are on mute. No. I can see our I can see our little red. Hello, can you hear us now? All right. Okay. All right, we're live. Woo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is Danny talking in a tin can with us? Yeah, Danny's in the tin can telephone system. <laughs> <laughs> my, head, my head's plugged up, so I'm a little, I'm a little anyway. <laughs> Your 
all, I hope he's head plugged up. <laughs> yeah, his whole, his <laughs> he did plug, plugged up. Plugged up. All right. So we're gonna. Um, I'm gonna call the regular select board meeting to order. It's about uh, 6:05 um, on May the 5th. So welcome everyone. Um, first item is to set adjust agenda. Do we have any changes, additions, subtractions? Everybody good? All right, we're gonna roll with the agenda as written. Communication from the audience. All right. Uh, all right, so the first thing, we need to approve minutes um, from last time, the, which was the regular select board meeting on April 21, and we had an ARPA public hearing also April 21, just preceding the select board meeting. Could motion we? Motion to approve both. Second. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve both sets of minutes as written. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 I'm going to abstain, Eric. I wasn't there. Thank you. Got it. Four ayes, one abstention. Excellent. Motion carries. Um, town manager's report. No Mr. Ready? I think right. so. I got a good one here. Oh, good. <laughs> um, okay. That's the road forms support. So, um, you want my copy? No, I got it right here. So, I've had several requests for children at play signs to be erected throughout the town. Um, I would love nothing more than to hand a children at play sign out with a newborn and say, "Here, this is this is what you're supposed to do with it. Put it on next to your house." Yeah. But um, I contact I. Talk to Tom. Tom said we got to talk to VLCT because of the past, um, and he said you should hear it from them. So I have a big long response from VLCT and their lawyers about why it is not the town, why we're not going to be putting children at play signs all over the place. So there, we don't do slow children anymore. There's guidance as to where these signs should go, and it should be around playgrounds, um, and not in areas where a child lives because the signs become ineffective because then they're all over the place. Like, look at all the stop signs. <laughs> Nobody stops at a stop sign anymore. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I have a, um, a two page document or a page and a half yeah. document uh, for explanation as to why. Um, so we'll put that, that'll be in with the, the minutes um, in this folder so you can access it online and read about it. So in summary though, basically they advise just putting up those signs next to playground. Type. Right. Or, yeah. All right. Because then it, you know, if, if there's a place where children are playing and there's no sign, that's, it's, I don't, yeah. I don't necessarily agree with 100% of it, but it makes sense. Okay. Um, so stop calling my office and asking to put it children. Creates a liability for the town. Yeah. Huh? That would be definitely at Mackville. I'm not sure about um, the pump track. It's, it's, well it's quite a ways off the road there. Um, like anywhere where a ball, like at a playground where a ball would roll into the road or something like that, where or kids were are congregating to an area. So a playground. Um, yeah, we could, the Mackville would be a good place if there isn't one there already. Um, it was pretty clear, and you go pretty slow right there because it changes from pavement to dirt. So there's yeah, a, and there's change. usually some good potholes there that's too. Right. Yeah. So, um, and the town of Hart. So this is next on my bullet list here. Um, moving away from children at play signs, the town of Hardwick has partnered with Hard Hardwick Rescue to supply those who wish to better identify the location of their property with E911 signage. Hardwick residents can fill out an order form online or in writing and send an email to amandafecto at hardwickvt.gov who will process the order. Volunteers from Hardwick Rescue will assemble the signs and deliver them at no charge. Folks can also drop orders off in person um, at the town manager's office. So we're gonna just try to keep putting this message out. We have 300 signs. Um, they budgeted uh, in 2021, 2022. They budgeted three thousand dollars for this project. I think we've spent all but a couple hundred dollars. Um, 
So we're going to see how the summer goes and when we do budget for 2023, um, if we're out of signs, we'll budget some more money um, for however, how popular it is. And how do they get installed and stuff? Um, how are we being consistent with the installation and placement? There's guidelines within the order forms. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So they're green with, with white lettering, um, reflective lettering. Yep. Um, so uh, um, hmm. Lucian Avery is uh, heading that up, mm -hmm. and I appreciate his help with this. And, and Hardwick Rescue. Um, so there. Um, on to the next. We will be placing temporary speed bumps on West Church Street as a traffic calming measure in anticipation of motorists trying to get around the road construction in the village. Um, the traffic calming measures will be in place for the summer months, for starters. This is a public service announcement. We all have to do a better job paying attention to driving within the speed limits and staying within the lines of tra lanes of travel on all roads. I want to point out that the signs at the crosswalk in front of the school have been hit three times since I've been the town manager. So, and the one at the in front of the uh, co-op has been hit at yeah. least once. Yep, yeah. and um, it's flattened. It's on completely the ridiculous that adults can drive around and not abide by traffic laws and hit things and just keep driving. So just want to let people know that that's what's going on. Um, I could go off on a tangent, but I'm not going to. Um, so slow down on West Church Street because there'll be speed bumps. Um, we got to try something. This has been an ongoing debate for many, many years. We're going to try something see how it works. Um, Bids for the wastewater plant project will be open on May 10th. So we'll... Open 30 days? Um, no, we'll be open. Like, open. Oh, the bids will be open. On May 10th. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we'll know then yeah. what to expect. Um, and still waiting on cost proposals. <laughs> still waiting on a cost proposal from SE Group for the pedestrian bridge. Um, I know they are working with Engineering Ventures to get the proposal together. They are going as fast as they can. And I've been updating USDA with information as I get it. Um, back to the wastewater plant project. I'm still looking for funding for that. Yep. And we're coming up with a strategy to be able to do that. Awesome. And it's out there. I know it exists. It's just finding it. It's just finding yeah, it you know. and getting, winning people's hearts and minds over to giving it to the town of Hardwick. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um, Question about the West Church Street. Are they going to be the same kind of speed bump things we had in the diner parking lot? Uh, a little or different. A little less of a, like, a, it's, they're longer. Longer, but yeah. similar, like, they kind of nail down or bolt mm -hmm. down to the road. Yeah, they right? bolt down. Movable. Yeah. 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 So we'll, we're going to see. I've um, spoken to a lot of folks on the street, and some are excited, some are on the fence. And, um, but it's they're a great willing, way to test it out. They're willing to try it. Yeah. And I think we need to do something. So we're doing it. Great. That's about it for me. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff, but yeah. I, like, I don't want to take up the whole meeting no, with my request. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, any questions? No. All right. I can read Tom's report if you want. Yeah, moving right along. Uh, the road foreman report. Yeah. Um, so roads, the guys have been out grading roads from, you know, cleaning up from winter and mud season. Um, they've graded, this is the ongoing list, and I know there's more, but West Hill area, West Woodbury, Marsh Road, Tucker Brook, Smith Farm Road, Town Farm Road, Ward Hill, Mountain View Road, Dimmick Road, Bailey Hazen, Stage House, Hardwick Farm Road, Pumpkin Lane, Porter Brook, and Montgomery Road. They started today on the end of Bridgman Hill and are working back towards town and they should be finished next week just to start again. <laughs> um, they were replaced culverts on Tucker Brook, Smith Farm Road, Cobb School Road, and two more on Bridgman and starting ditching on Smith Farm. Cleaned two parks downtown, poured concrete for new light base on Main Street, which was hit by a vehicle, and set street light back up. Um, helped mark gate valves and manholes for the downtown grinding project and paving, um, repaired catch basins on Summer Street and a sewer manhole on Vermont Avenue, helped with a sewer and water issue on Lower Cherry Street and dealt with two water leaks. 
So they've been busy. <laughs> and um, moved a tree in the townhouse. And moved the tree at the to townhouse. To prepare for the new sign. That's right. Um, yeah, I have a list for them just about every day, and they're doing good work. And the thank them when you see them. Potentially the trash cans um, the, that are on Main Street generally. People were out today. I had three different people yep. ask me where they could throw something away. So they're going to go out probably this week is the best guess, right? They're, they're going out soon. Yep, yeah. it's on the list. In the Great. meantime, take your trash with you and don't leave it sitting in a bag on Main Street just for fun. Yeah, come on, people. Yeah. What the hell? Garbage. Uh, okay, I have a quick question. Liz brought this up last year, but I don't know if it's in the um, the roadmap or not. Um, is there a list of Where the old senior center was? Yeah, in the lot. Looks um, okay now. We're not uh, weed whacking. I don't think. Well, yeah, it's not weed whacking weather yet. But <laughs> <laughs> nothing's growing. The grass just started to grow. But yeah, we. I mean, what kind of cleanup do you want to see in there? Well, I think it, what was mentioned was just that it looks. I mean. It, Basically, the house was taken down, but nothing was done with it. And I know it doesn't make sense to do anything major because of the eventual build in there, but maybe it's just worth talking to Jody about, um, Jody and Tom, about if there's anything that we could just do um, to kind of clean it and just, or even maybe just put up a sign. It's like, this is going to be something eventually. <laughs> it just looks, it looks pretty oh, yeah. bad. Oh, like, um, like, like pardon, pardon the, the mess? Yeah. yeah. Uh, something in progress or something like that? I like it. Yeah, kind of like how we have a sign up by the swinging bridge that's like, yeah. hey, which could probably, speaking of which, could probably be refreshed. But uh, yeah, something that's you know, especially with especially with Memorial Day, the parade coming up, I think it might be worth putting just something that's that's uh, maybe the library can put something up there. Or we can. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. Excellent ideas. All right. Thank you. Moving along, Hardwick Police Department report given by Mike Henry. Uh, a few good points. Uh, the big one is we hired another officer. Um, he is level two certified. Uh, his name is Paul Bernard. And he um, on our he's yeah, on our, he's on our yeah. point later on our agenda. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he is. Yeah. I just guess I should put my glasses on here. Um, it's okay. You can still bring it up. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, he's uh, you know from. Uh, North Country area, and um, he's working out pretty good so far. He's been on two weeks. His wife is uh, uh, pregnant, due next week, so he's going to be off next week. Uh, but uh, we're pretty happy to have him right now, and hopefully we'll be able to get into the academy to be level three certified in the future here. That's the plan. Um, the only other thing is uh, the cruiser. We picked up the new uh, cruiser. We've got that out to be striped and um, we were able to save some money on the upgrades or the, uh, the outfitting of it. Uh, I was able to get a uh, used cage to go in the back and the big ticket item was the uh, radio. Um, we needed to upgrade our radios. Um, bottom line, the new radio that's out, we got the, the model down. New radio that's out is 5500 bucks. We got this one for 750 bucks. Wow. So we were able Doesn't to save work. them. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just, apparently it's the model down, but the, the radios we have right now, I'm wondering if they're the problem because, you know, we've put a lot of money into the uh, repeater and we're still having issues hmm. at this point. So I'm hoping it's now for fix the radios in the car. Maybe that might be the problem as well. Um, we'll go from there. Um, other than that, the only other thing that we're <clears throat> we just started working on um, is the uh, revamping all of our policies. Um, some of our policies are out of date. Um, and as, as everybody knows, it's a continual work in progress uh, with law enforcement. Uh, you know, we're getting updates yearly with uh, a lot of the policies. So we just started that. We're going to move everything to the digital platform rather than just a binder 
we've had and several people have had binders and when we went through none of them were consistent so we'll get one consistent uh, thing so on that <coughs> I've hired uh, Ed Miller to help me with that project um, Ed is also a retired trooper and that's what he did he worked for the office of professional development working on policies so um, hopefully we'll get that uh, all revamped uh, fairly soon I'm hoping by summertime is the plan revamping policies is also a town thing it feels like we're always checking on policies yeah we've got to do it we found some that were back to 2013 so we need to get things upgraded doesn't sound that old it's a while ago law enforcement it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm glad you're on it thank you questions for Mike all right thank you um, Moving along, item one, the select board to consider reappointing Doug Casavant for Hardwick Town Forest Fire Warden for a five year term. So moved. So moved. Second. And a second. Any discussion? How long has Doug been our fire warden? I asked a few people, and the only answer I got was a really, really long time. <laughs> yeah. As long as he's willing, that's yep. good. Yeah, excellent. Okay, All right. So, so all in favor of appointing Chud Casavant to be fire warden, please say aye. 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 All right, that's everyone. So motion carries. Thank you. And thank you, Doug. I really appreciate that. Item two, select board to consider approval of liquor license for 41 South Main LLC doing business as Scale House. Um, I'm assuming we don't have any issues with them. I move we approve this liquor license. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Any uh, discussion on the liquor license? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, that's everyone. Motion carries unanimously. Um, next is item three, select board to consider approving an updated internal controls policy which is in our um, packet. So I just like to point out, so there's really no major changes, mostly updating titles of employees. There were spots that referred to my position as the admin assistant. There's been a change over the years, so that was changed to business manager. Added some protocols for email approvals of invoices, which was implemented due to the pandemic. Um, versus a signature, um, updated our accounts payable schedule to bi-weekly and removed anything that no longer applied. There was some language in here that just really didn't apply anymore. So really, I did put the old one in there so you could sort of see, but there really are not any significant changes. It's just that kind of cleaning it up so it's current. All right, so there was the summary of the changes to the uh, town internal controls policy. Um, entertain a motion to adopt the updated internal controls policy. So moved. Second. All right. So we have a motion and a second to adopt the updated policy. Any discussion? All right. Hearing none, all in favor of approving the internal controls policy as written, please say aye. 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 Wait, there was, all I heard from Zoom was a hiccup. Did you guys both say aye at the same time? Danny, you yeah. said? Okay. And Kaylee, you said? Yep. Okay. So got everybody motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Next is... Um, that's that, right? This is the internal controls. Mm -hmm. um, so next is item four, select board to consider appointing Paul Bernard as Harvick police officer. We have, we heard a summary from Mike already that he's um, level, two. level two certified, looking to get him into the academy when there's a spot. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any questions for Mike about um, Paul Bernard? 
You're going to give them the children at play thing for a baby gift, is that it? Yes. <laughs> all right. And Cherry's right. making jokes about children at play. All right, all, right. all in favor of appointing Paul Barnard as a Arctic police officer, please say aye. 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 I think Danny said it. Should I think, you say hi or I? I think <laughs> I think that's everybody. Any any nays? I think I think that's all eyes. Motion carries unanimously, and thank you for recruiting. And yeah. Can I just ask Mike a quick question? Please do. Um, yes. Mike, I'm just wondering where we're at. Where we're at now with our with our hire at how many. Um, how many officers are we still looking to hire, or are we? Well, ultimately, we need to get at least four, four to five level three certified officers. I don't have any, but I have one in the academy right now. Um, I'm hoping to get Paul there. Uh, we need to get a sergeant at some point uh, to do the approval, and also at some point I'd like to have a detective, uh, but it's going to take a little while to build that up. You okay, get great. So how many level twos do we have? Uh, we have six level twos right now. Not all full time, probably. No, uh, no, they're not all full time. They're just part time. So I have three that Some are full time needed. right now, and I have three that are as needed. Well, um, when they can work. That's the way it works. Level up within our current hirings. We would like to. Uh, we, we haven't had any level threes apply, and that's been the problem. Um, if I can get level threes to apply, uh, that would be great. But uh, unfortunately, in the, env the environment we are in right now, it's just not out there. Uh, we put the word out everywhere. Uh, it's just been challenging. One in the academy, and even after he gets out of the academy, it's going to take probably, uh, it'll be a, a year until we can get him up and running uh, to where he needs to be. Okay. So even, so even with an additional level two, we're looking at any current hirings being a, at least a year out for getting level three certified? Yes. Yes. If we have to certify them, if you know of people that would like to come over that are level three certified, I will pay you. <laughs> so a huge bonus. A huge percentage of your select okay, board so salary. We are currently still recruiting for level three. We are still. Thanks, Mike, yes. for explaining it. Yes. yes. It sounds like we're still recruiting for good people. Yes. Generally, right? Generally. And we have gone through. Uh, I've gone through quite a few applicants, just so you know, um, and uh, I've had a few that I've, I've just denied. I haven't even given an, app, an interview to. So you're being picky. That's good. Yeah, we don't need the problems. Right. So. Yeah, great. It's going to take some time. It's going to take time. Yeah. All right. It's one thing we have. Time. Time. We, well, we no, don't. Hope we Time is it. valuable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to move us on to item five, select board to consider approving the 2022 local emergency management plan. I think LEMP just doesn't sound good. I don't know who came up with that, but anyway. Maybe the LEMP town manager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do we have, um, so basically, Oh, this is a different 
form that used to be, isn't it? The adoption. That's just the do adoption oh, form. Okay. That's not the actual plan. The actual plan. I it's did. Long. Long. It's lengthy, oh, but I right. have to put it in your Super long. packet. It's, right. Oh yeah. It's okay. And it's really um, just really updating contacts and all of that. Um, so, but but basically, the, our evacuation spots and right. Sort of stuff. But our main person is Mike as our police chief. Tommy, we got Tommy, we got Opie. Yeah. Okay. Cut. I move we adopt the uh, 2022 limp local emergency <laughs> <Sorry>. management plan. <laughs> Sorry. So we have a we have a motion to adopt it. I'll second it. Sherry is second. Any any discussion about the emergency management plan? Uh, all right. All let's, hope, let's hope we don't need it. Let's hope we yes. don't need it. We don't, right. <laughs> all right. All in favor of adopting the local emergency management plan, uh, up, uh, please say aye. 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 And just is this online? Aye. If people right. want to look That's, at it, is it it's online? In the drive, yeah. It's available online. Not on the drive, I mean on the website. Um, I don't know if we post on our website. Are we supposed it's to? on there or not. No. If there's a spot for it. We could. It's we fine. Could. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is it public information? Um, well, it's, I mean, it's. it does have like a lot of people's cell phones. Or the emails, parts about, so sure you know, the important parts about where shelters are and stuff like that. It seems like we should have some I kind think, of. I almost think that the state might use this document to. Maybe to do something publish of some their of that own. information. I'm I'm not positive, but this particular document has a lot of emails and cell phone numbers right. and stuff and on it. And it's more so like strategic planning right. and implementation of. But just yeah, just for information, maybe at yeah. a future meeting we could just like announce where people would potentially find that if they. Yeah, I don't like know. If it is I on mean, the I state don't know website. what you do. Yeah. 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 All right. So just to. Uh, Moving recap. I confused you. You did confuse me to recap. So the motion carried. We thanks for adopting the local emergency management plan. Sherry had a good idea that we should find out if the state already publishes the like the yeah. gathering points and whatnot, shelters um, and that type of thing. Yeah, the Red Cross. This potentially the, be the shelters identified in the the plan are identified by the Red Cross. Mm. Like they're controlled oh. by the Red Cross. Okay. Mm. So, like for example, it Hazen is one, right? It indicates that Hazen is a shelter, and then, in it says or you know organized by Red Cross. Mm -hmm. So they would they would be the ones that would push that out there in the event of an emergency. Okay. This is where you can go. They would partner with the TV, radio. Right. All and, the and media broadcast stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. There we go. All right. Item six is select board to hear from Nora DeMuth. De, did I say that right? DeMuth. DeMuth. Uh, for, from the flower basket about her economic development loan application to purchase the Buffalo Mountain Co-op building. So, yes. you are here, and mm -hmm. you're looking to purchase the old, the, I guess it's the current Buffalo Mountain Co-op building yeah, for a little exactly. while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, that's your, are, is the plan to move the flower basket over there? Precisely, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a large building, and um, I would love to see the flower basket on Main Street. And yeah, as you guys know, the flower basket's been in Hardwick for over 50, this is our 50th anniversary this year. Um, so I'm really excited to, to bring it into the center of town. Mm -hmm. um, the the co-op building is huge, however, and the flower basket does, I don't think that I want to expand the flower basket to fill the entire, <laughs> the entire co-op building. Um, however, I think that it has real potential as a mixed-use building. Um, and I've also actually already have a couple of people approaching me to, for a tenancy as retail, other retail tenants, and a cafe tenant. Um, so my, I included a business plan with my, with my proposal, um, and I have a fun game. If you find a typo, you get a free sticker. These are free stickers that are free, also available at the shop. No bribery involved. <laughs> but, we all um, got free stickers already. So. <laughs> I know, exactly. I gave everybody free stickers. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, um, I'm really interested in 
sustaining the Buffalo Mountain Co-op building um, as a really vital part of Main Street. Um, I have a personal connection to it. It was my first, one of my first things that I did when I moved to Harvard was mop the floors of the co-op building. Uh, so I have a real investment in it personally. Um, and I, I just would love to see the flower basket there. Um, and as a matter of fact, um, there's three of us that really hold the flower basket together right now. I'm the owner. Um, Sharon Fialco works with me as a business manager, and Nicole Davignon, who's the previous owner, after Jane Johns works with me as our designer. All three of us have been approached multiple times by people in the community saying, please buy the co-op building and please move there. Um, so I've, it's, I've been really heartened to have just kind of a, a sense of community support around, around the move. Great. And I'm happy to field questions and talk further. Great. So we also have a, a executive session after to discuss financial details and stuff. But sure. this is a time to discuss open, you know, open questions that people have. So anybody have questions? Mm. No. Nora, I was wondering um, what your hopeful timeline was for this uh, purchase and move. Yeah, great question, Kaylee. Um, I included a timeline with my business plan. Um, I think it's page 13. <laughs> um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but I'm, we're, we're actually well into the first few steps of the timeline. Um, I would love to be, one of the, one of the things that I am really really interested in making sure happens is that we don't have an empty storefront on Main Street. Um, and I've been in really talking closely with the folks uh, at the co-op. Bruce Kaufman is leading the committee regarding the purchase and sale. Um, and so I see us moving in as soon as the co-op is able to move out. Um, and if we don't have all of our ducks in the row, if I don't have all of the funding available, the co-op is, we're in negotiations now about um, having us rent the space from the co-op so that there is a presence on Main Street. Um, but that's looking at, you know, it kind of depends on when the co-op's able to get out. Um, it may even be a, a kind of a, a shuffle where they are able to move out of the retail space on the first floor, but still maintain use of the cafe space on the second floor um, while they're waiting for their hood in the commercial kitchen in their new um, Mill Street location. Um, but I'm, we're anticipating July to be in there and selling flowers out of Main Street. Yeah, the co-op itself, I know from Emily that they're having... You know, it's it's a whole planning like thing with doing the redoing the floors in the market building and bringing in different um, equipment and stuff like that. So logistically, she the last time I talked to her, she said that they had hoped they would be moving over to the market in May. It looks like it's going to be more like mid June before they get over there. Yeah. So. And, and we're, I, I, we're, I'm in a position with the flower basket that we are really comfortable where we are right now, so we have a lot of flexibility around when we can move. We don't, you know, we're not, we're not needing to push the timeline forward for the co-op, um, but what's most important to me is that it's a very easy segue so that we don't have the vacant storefront on Main Street. Mm -hmm. that's, my, that's really my primary goal around this. Great. That's great. I did. I also want to say your um, your business plan is great, and the timeline is fantastic too. I just want I appreciate you explaining that. Um, so it sounds like you are in kind of consistent communication with co-op in terms of yep. what their timeline is, so that way you're working together towards stilling the space. Is that my understanding? It? Exactly. Yeah, I, I'm very comfortable keeping a very fluid conversation open with the co-op around this and our potential tenants. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's really, I, I, I recognize the difficulty with supply chain right now and, and understand that their move out may be slower than we hope or faster. I mean, I'm very, we're actually fortunate to be in a very flexible position. Um, as far as the flower basket business is concerned, our slow period is the summer. Um, so this is, <laughs> you're catching me in one of the busiest weeks of the year. Mother's Day is this Sunday. Um, after the select board meeting, I'm going back to the shop and I'm going to be arranging flowers all night. Um, <laughs> but this is our last really big day of the, of the year. We have prom, graduation, and then summer weddings we do support. We actually don't actually design for a lot of events. We just do support labor for local florists. So we have a lot of 
kind of leeway around when we can move or not. Um, and I think that's a real advantage for us with this. We can, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm a co-op member. I want to do what I can to support their move and make this work. Great. Other questions for Nora? Did they get the business plan? It's in the drive. It is. Yeah, I'll put it in there seven days. Oh, okay. okay. Um, all right, so. Uh, my other question. Oh, Eric, I do have one more quick question. Go ahead. Is that okay? Can you hear me? Hi. Yeah. Oh, I'm just looking. Nora, I'm looking at your um, profit in the last year, 2020 to 2021. Yeah. And it looked like um, there was. Um, like you had some significant growth. I haven't read a PL in a while. Um, so, Kaylee, are, are, are you going to keep it? Kaylee, are you going to keep it general? Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're going to keep yeah. it general. Because we we have a we have an executive session after to get into specifics of financials. Oh, okay. I can I can wait for that. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. But I'm happy for the public to know that Flaw Resident has experienced significant growth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. Ah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So let's do um, move along. We'll finish up our the rest of our meeting and then do an executive session. So uh, select board reports, new business and old business. What do we have? Um, I can say that, uh, remind everybody that Saturday is Green Up Day and the Solid Waste District at the ARC is now taking a new, those lithium batteries, they can be, re, they can be taken to the ARC now for a $3 fee. So don't keep those around and don't throw them in the trash, but take them to the ARC. Um, and bury, driving to bury. Yeah, because that's where the ARC is. Yeah. Maybe we can, maybe we can coordinate and do it. I'm planning to make a trip to the ARC on that third Saturday when you can take a car load for six dollars or whatever. Can you bring them to the thing when they come up to? to but I don't want to take people's bulging batteries in my no. car. Can, Thank you. Can when when the waste management district comes to and does hazardous. That's waste hazardous drop -off. waste. Yeah. Yeah. Can we bring them? Yeah, to that? that's hazardous waste. Yeah. That's not until August, I don't think. Anyway, um, and then, uh, yeah, Green Up Day. So there are a couple of places in East Hardwick where they're going to be distributing the bags for Green Up Day, the Grange, and I've forgotten what the other place is. But um, there's also bags being distributed at the Hazen Lobby and here in the, no? They're in the yep, Jason. Up at Hazen. They are not at Whistle. Don't come to Whistle for them. The state site says they're at Whistle. They are not at Whistle. I don't have any. Just saying. And then the dumpster will be at the town garage. Dumpsters. Okay. Oh, not at the fire department. Because a lot no, of times it's at the, the fire, fire department. Because so. the fire department, the COVID testing at the fire department, so they're moving oh, it up here. Okay. Yeah. Jason. So take the green bags to the town garage. Yep. Jason will, there will be a sandwich board down at the fire station directing people to come up here. Okay. Please Actually, don't good. leave your trash at the fire station. Last year, there was a great big pile of trash left there, unattended. They're they had try. to all be moved yeah. up to the town garage. They're going to try to man that <laughs> so it doesn't happen. So that they can't leave. Yeah. 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 Um, and the only other thing I have <clears> is that Opie and I have a little meeting with Lisa Ryan from Preservation Trust to talk. She wanted to to check in about the bridge and she wanted to talk about the townhouse with the Freeman Foundation money. So Great. we're going to do that on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. That's all I got. Anyone else? I have a couple of Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I have a couple. Um, uh, we, I just wanted to mention that the uh, perfect Equity Committee is going to has uh, sent out invitations to community partners and to uh, the select board and um, department chairs for our first training um, or workshop, which is going to be offered by the Peace and Justice Center. Um, the focus is on racism. It's on May twenty fifth. At this time, um, it is it, it's pretty limited. It's an in person 
of workshops is only limited to 40 people. So we are um, specifically inviting uh, stakeholders. We are planning on having a community, community-wide workshop later on um, in the year, but this is kind of more specific to um, different community organizations um, and leaders in the community. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, and then along the same lines, um, I received notification about um, funding that is coming from the state uh, through the Office of Racial Equity, uh, which is the department that Susanna Davis runs. There is um, there's some funding available um, to support uh, work similar to what the our equity committee is doing. And there is a survey that's due May 30th, but there is potentially extra funding available if we complete the survey by tomorrow. So I wanted to just bring it to the select board. Um, I think it's something that part of could fill the survey out for. It's not a guarantee of funds, um, but it's basically kind of stating what you're working on as a town and um, connecting the town with potential funders for some of our projects. So I just wanted to run it by the select board um, to get a sense of, I mean, you know, Opie and I can uh, be seems to be interested in, and I, and I would be happy to fill it out. Um, but I just wanted to double check with the board to see if that was something you'd like me to go for. Please fill that out for us. <laughs> That's me. That's my opinion. <laughs> Sherry, I'm, I'm so surprised. That yeah. <laughs> Gonna hit. Go <laughs> <laughs> so hey, you... wait a minute. Cool. Well, at this, at this point, <laughs> project that we would be asking for, we're just kind of telling them what we're doing and then getting connected with others. So it sounds like the board's okay with me going ahead with that. So I'm just looking around that people are nodding. So I would say that the board generally agrees. We can say that? I think the board generally agrees that you should go ahead and fill out the survey and mm -hmm. get, get in line for funding. Oh, great. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Oh, Tanya. Um, just want to remind everyone that property taxes are due Tuesday, May 10th, and will be open from 7 to 7. Cool. Mm -hmm. Very accommodating of you. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes. I did ask her, I, Tanya was gracious enough to provide an update on kind of what we have left to collect with just five days to go. Um, I actually think it looks pretty good. We're at just over $1.4 million left to collect. Out of? 5.7, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, you're gonna be busy the next couple of days. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep, so, um, yeah, so yeah. left to collect. Great. So. One of the things that John Jewett pointed out several years ago was that Hardwick people pay their taxes, and therefore, Hardwick does not have to borrow money to continue its operating expenses. And we save money by the fact that people pay their taxes. And thank you very much for that. It helps us all. We help it ourselves. Is. Right. All right. Anything else? Eric, I just have, Eric, I just have one other. This is just a, uh, two really quick questions. Um, so it's already May. I'm just wondering if we should start. I didn't see it in the minutes, but I missed it. If we should start thinking about um, meeting for water rates. Um, and put it to the team for, I know it's usually in the summer that we do that, but yep. uh, April flew by for me, so I just wanted to mention that. I, I would be happy to uh, serve again on that, on that team. Um, and then I was also wondering, um, in terms of next steps for ARPA funds, we got some really great presentations from the community, and I know we still have uh, multiple years to spend the money, um, but what Maybe we can just have this be an agenda item for our next meeting is, is kind of a now what. You know, we've got these these uh, ideas. Do we continue to take ideas? When do we start kind of narrowing down what we want to spend those funds on? Yep. Yeah, I agree. Let's add that to next time. Uh, start to develop that process. Yep. Develop a plan for how we're going to arrive at a conclusion about the way we want to spend that and I'm going back where when are we when do the bids close on opening on the 
the 10th, right? right. May 10th, yeah. So we'll have more information about the wastewater plant by then, too. Okay. Good. Motion to adjourn? Wait, first thing, no, we can't adjourn. Motion well, to go to executive, executive session. session right? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to go into executive session um, to discuss the uh, community development loan with um, Nora and town manager and probably business manager. Are you coming? Okay. And how are Danny and Kelly uh, yeah. going to? Uh, huh? Are you going downstairs? Yeah, we're going downstairs. We'll bring you with us. Yeah, I can just set up a quick Zoom link and email it to you. I'll just set up a separate one here. Just give me a few minutes. Yeah, look, look for a, yeah, look for a link in your email in the next five or ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, I just gotta pick the other. Okay. All right. So wait, wait, wait. All in favor of going into executive session, please say aye. 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 We already lost Casey, uh, Kaylee, I think. All right. So that motion carries. Four eyes. Four All right. eyes. Four eyes. Four eyes. Hey. All right. So we'll see you downstairs, Danny. <laughs>